Techniques for better blending. Everyone's frustrated by it, but hardly anyone is putting a solution to managing particle rotation. If we had something flat like a plane, and we wanted something like an arrow that we wanted to put on the plane, we would certainly use particles to do it. Now, the sample will just need 150 of them. We'll have them start at zero and finish at zero. And we just need to get them stuck on there long enough to make a copy of them and use them. So now the other plane that we're going to use is going to be our arrow, and there they are. And we want to manage the rotation so that it's going in all sorts of direction. Without rotation, it's very plain. With rotation, certainly it's the object's Z that we'd want to control. Oh, Blender seems to be giving us a bit of a problem. We double check. Yes, this is definitely going up on the Z axis. There's little question about it. A lot of times we may go fishing for the right axis. Don't go fishing for the right axis. Stick with object Z. But now go to the object that is creating the particles tab in and since I've left it at the center because we're good blender users we like to do that I want to go ahead and rotate on my axes and find out just what exactly is going on here I'm rotating minus 90 degrees on the x-axis and now when I look at all of the little particles it allows me to rotate them in such a way as to create the right kind of confusion that I'm looking for. When I do the phase, it rotates them along the Z axis. I can do a random rotation and I can do a random placement of the Z axis and suddenly I have exactly what I'm looking for. But it's just not quite the right shape. Oh, now I gotta deal with this thing being sideways. Fortunately for me, it's just a simple arrow. If this was a complicated piece of geometry, I would be nuts working at 90 degrees to what it is I'm working on. We had rotated in edit mode negative 90 degrees. What if we just violate the principles of object and edit rotation and rotate in object mode? Rotate the X the opposite direction. Now I can go into edit mode and I can change the shape of what it is that the particle system is based on. No harm came to any of the arrows. They're now doing exactly what I expected them to do. They rotate the way I expected them to rotate, and it's easy for me to see where my changes will affect the particle system because my object, which is the whole point of this, my object is now facing the same way the particles are. One more time. Now we have something that is not flat we want exactly the same sort of object. Tab into edit mode and go ahead and make it the way I want to make it. And this arrow is going to be pretty much the same thing that we just did. There we go. Good. Now we already know that the problem is coming. So let's just go ahead and make that problem happen. A new particle system that starts and finishes before the camera's even rolling. Now we go down and we choose an object to be that which will sponsor the particles. Okay, they're all pointed up. We expected that, but we haven't actually activated rotation. Oh, for Pete's sake. What is going on? Hey, there's a great way to make magnetic lines. Look at that. Velocity and hair. Okay, they're all sideways. Certainly on this curved object, we could use the old trick and go back to the object Z. We go back to our object into edit mode. And let's, from the very base of our object, rotate on the X 90 degrees, come into edit mode and rotate X 90 degrees. Now, when we take a look, Oh, well, yeah, kind of, sort of. Because it's not a flat object, object Z points everything up. And we should have expected that. Not to worry. Object Z works on flat objects. What we're looking for is normal or normal tangent. Now we can do the exact same thing with all of the arrows, the houses, the trees, whatever it is that you're working on. They'll behave and they'll point outward from a curved object based on the normal or normal tangent. And now 
when you look at that object, you have in edit mode a better sense of what it is to expect. It's just so much easier working on something that's facing the same way its little sponsored particles are facing. Now in a rendered view, I can see that all my particles are dancing above the surface, whether they're houses or trees or people or arrows. I didn't want this. One thing that makes particles dance? Physics. If I turn off physics, they hug the surface. But if I turn off physics, I'm also unable to use children, simple or interpolated. So I have to weigh very carefully. Do I want my physics to bounce everything off the surface and then I can change the main particle in edit mode to get things sitting back down again. By doing that, it allows me now to leave physics on without disturbing the view of having things sit on the surface and I can go and activate children for that look of complicated or busy or whatever I need. So while you will have to try it a couple of times, this is how to get better control of your particle rotation so you can take care of things in edit mode aligned to the way it's easiest to work. In edit mode, turn that object 90 degrees plus or minus on the axis that makes the Z point up on the particle system. And then in object mode, on the same axis, turn it the other 90 degrees. These are things we should all know for better blending. Confusing at times, yes, and totally well worth it. Hope this saves you a minute or two. Blend on and take care.